Awesome. Well then, how's it going everyone? My name is Logan Kilpatrick. Uh, I'm the community manager for the Julia language. Um, and this talk is going to be about diversity and inclusion efforts in the Julia community. So really quickly, the agenda, we're just going to go over some high level stuff about what's been done in the last year. Um, I'm just going to provide a, a quick disclaimer, if you will, on Google Analytics. Um, and then we're actually going to dive into some of the data um, on the Julia Lang website, uh, discourse, the official documentation, uh, Julia Academy, YouTube, um, and then we're going to talk about takeaways and next steps. So what we've done last year, so we're fortunate enough to have been able to launch three new Julia Academy courses. Um, people worked really hard. The, the authors of all three of those courses worked really hard and they turned out really, really well. Um, we've actually had 15,000 students um, sign up for Julia Academy and take a course um, over the last year. Um, and there's also some additional courses in the pipeline right now, which is awesome. Um, we were fortunate enough, the Julia language was, was fortunate enough to participate in Google Coden um, this past fall slash winter. And we supported 212 students through Google Coden, um, which was a huge success for us. Um, and then we're actually currently mentoring 25 students through Julia, Julia Summer of Code and then Google Summer of Code combined. Um, and then we are also participating in our um, inaugural year of Google Season of Docs. Uh, and that will be right around mid-August, we should be releasing um, which projects were, were actually selected to participate in that. Um, and then the last two points, um, we were fortunate enough to be able to partner with Major League Hacking this year um, for the inaugural year of their MLH fellowship. Um, and I believe there's, I think roughly 10 students who are um, working full-time this summer, working on Julia projects, um, facilitated through um, MLH and, and some of the mentors within the Julia community. And then the last piece is we've been able to make a lot of Julia events global. And part of that, we didn't really have a choice because of the, the pandemic. Um, but I definitely think that it's opened a lot of people's eyes, especially mine, to the fact that we can really make, you know, all the resources and all the meetups super accessible by uh, having them be online and global to, to everybody. Sweet, so some really quick important notes before we dive into to some of the data and the, the metrics. Um, so a lot of the information is coming via Google Analytics. Um, I included a link here in the presentation that you can't see because you're just watching, but I'll post this somewhere afterwards if you're interested in, in looking through some of these links. Um, the, the disclaimer is take all this with a grain of salt. Obviously Google Analytics um, isn't 100% correct. So some of this data might not be 100% correct. Um, and then the last, last disclaimer is when I refer to this past year, I'm referring to July 28th, 2019 through July 28th, 2020. And when I refer to quote unquote last year, I'm referring to July 26th, 2018 uh, through July 27th, 2019. So this is what the distribution of, of users based on gender and age looks like for uh, julialang.org. Previously, we were roughly around 12.4% uh, female users on julialang.org, and that's uh, now up to 17.7%, which is awesome. And then the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the age distribution. Um, and the, the one thing I'd like to point out is that the number of 18 to 24-year-old users, um, the little blue graph on the far left-hand side um, has actually increased in the past year versus last year is the, is the orange graph. This is the distribution of um, countries in which users are coming from when they visit the Julia language um, website. Uh, so this is the top 35 countries, but actually we have 224 countries in total represented, which is really awesome to see. Um, and I actually double checked because I didn't know there was 224 countries. There's actually only like 195, I think, um, that are part of the United Nations. So we are more diverse than the United Nations. This is the distribution of, of users um, for discourse. Um, and we were previously at roughly 15% um, female users on discourse. And now we're somewhere around 19.3%, which is, it's awesome to see that, that growth and similar trends um, in, the, in the age section as well as the previous graph. 
Um, this is the distribution of users for the official Julia language documentation. Um, we were previously only at 12.4% um, female users. We're trending somewhere around 17.7, 18%, um, which is super awesome to see. So for Julia Academy, Julia Academy was previously a Julia computing product that was pay, a paid for service that transitioned to be an open, um, an open source service as part of the greater Julia language community. So we don't have the same two year section of data to present. Um, so we're just presenting one year, the latest year of, of data here, and we're at 18.6% um, female users. Hopefully the next year when we present this information again, um, ideally we'd actually wanna see the Julia Academy data be more diverse than the other sources, um, given that this is sort of the place that we're pushing new users to, um, to get them involved in, in the Julia community. So for the Julia languages, YouTube, we are not using Google Analytics for that. We're using YouTube's built-in uh, um, analytics platform. Um, so the, not, I can't confirm as to why these numbers look so much different than in other places, but previously the percentage of female users um, on YouTube was 4.8%. Um, we're actually trending this year slightly up, but it's only at 5.2. Um, and this could have something to do with the difference in how YouTube versus Google are detecting um, metrics about their users. I'm not 100% sure, um, but it's definitely something interesting to, to look into. And the other important part for this piece of data is that um, something we notice is that the diversity of our users actually increases during, during events like JuliaCon. So if you were to look at the last seven days um, versus this graph, we actually have a higher percentage of female users in the last seven days than over the last year, which is, um, I think, something positive to see. So some quick takeaways. Um, something positive, the Julia community is definitely becoming more diverse based on this, based on this data. Um, but the flip side of that is that I think there's still a lot of work to be done. So the, the next steps, what do those look like? Um, today actually is the um, BOF titled Moving Forward on Diversity and Inclusion in the Julia community. Um, that's led by Huda in August. Um, and the time is listed there. I think it's the second BOF today. Um, and you can join that on, uh, on Discord. But if you are watching this video afterwards um, and you can't join that BOF, then feel free to, to send an email to diversity at juliolang.org um, or join the, the diversity channel on Slack. We're always looking for, for people to help out because um, as the abstract of this talk was titled, um, it really does take the entire community to, to push these initiatives forward. So we, we need everyone's help on this. And that is all I have. So if there's questions or comments, um, you can ping me on Discord Slack by email, or if there's any live questions, happy to take those. Otherwise, I'll, I'll yield my time back. Well, thanks, Logan. Um, so I'm just looking at the chat, and uh, I guess this, the first question is, uh, do we have any information on, let's say, uh, racial data within the community? Or uh, um, there's also a question with regard to whether we have any non-binary gender data. Um, is this yeah, something that's, that's easy to collect? Yeah. That is a good question. I think we would have to, um, later on during JuliaCon, you'll be able to watch the um, results of the Julia Computing user survey. And I think that will shed some light on it. And I actually think that's a, a super helpful metric to get an idea of what our users look like. Um, but I don't think that's something that's easy for us to attain automatically. We, we really have to rely on those, those manual surveys like Julia Computing did to get that data. Right. Well, on that note, uh, Logan, thanks very much.